you've just landed on this channel, this is where I do weekly cycling videos, both inspirational and entertaining cycling stories, and I do absolutely throff over a deep dive road bike review, or in this case, we've got the bike elevated slightly and my left leg is out, so we can make way for the SRAM Force one by with a quark power meter sitting right there. So I thought I would move this review out onto the road. A couple of reasons. Number one is I had a really shit one in front of the camera yesterday. I was poor form. And number two, started to think about it. And doing this review out on the road makes a lot of sense because I think a lot of people have some preconceived ideas, I did anyway, that you can't ride a one by system on hilly terrain. And look, I'm about to hit a five minute climb and I'm gonna ride this one by system on hilly terrain today and I'm gonna to link to the ride below so you can all check it out. And for reference below me, I've got a one by drivetrain, which means there's one single chain ring at the front and an 1132 on the rear. I'm using force quark power meter. Now you can get one by in all the main road group sets these days. SRAM started off in mountain and then sort of migrated to cyclocross and then also the gravel and roads been since sort of 2017. And the thing about this group set below me is a lot of people have an idea that you can't get the same gear range with a one by system. And that's not, that's not actually true. Now GCN did a really good video on this topic. So I'm gonna to link to that below, but really the main thing that we're gonna be talking about today is the variation between gears, which I'll explain shortly. So I just polished off that hill. It's about a four or 5% gradient, five minutes. Still had three gears to spare. And look, for this review, what I thought I would do, because I rode two by for 10 years almost, before I've switched now to a one by system, let's do a two by system versus a one by system. And let's break it into four parts. The pros of each system, the cons of each system. Thirdly, my riding experiences with the one by. And lastly, we'll conclude with which system I think is best and why. So before we go deep on those four points, a couple of little stories are gonna add good context to this review. And I just wanna point out up front here, I have a little bit of trouble personally pronouncing SRAM. I tend to use sh SRAM instead. So if that comes across, I just wanted to point it out. I don't mean to do it. So the first little story is an engineering consulting firm was engaged by SRAM a number of years ago to do an assessment on all their products. And this firm, they don't do the cycling industry, they're across all industries, aerospace, mechanical engineering. And after doing their assessment, they said, regarding the drivetrain, to have an object being the chain derailing, sort of mid-air, and that system sort of relinquishing its control over that object being the train is bad engineering practices. Which makes a lot of sense, right? We've all been at the side of the road, pulling the chain back onto the front chain ring. And we've seen in the Tour de France at a really inappropriate time, chains coming off. So, you know, it's a, probably a core reason, I would say maybe the number one reason why SRAM decided to start making one by systems, mountain, cyclocross, and now road. So the second little story, there's irony at play here, a pro continental cycling team Team Aqua Blue 2018, they rode these 3T road bikes that would only enable a one by system. You couldn't put a front derailleur on them. And they were designed with efficiency gains in mind, right? Aerodynamic, short seat stay, etc. And as a result, Team Aqua Blue in 2018 were the first professional cycling team to ride one by during their race season. Now, the thing that came into play here was they actually had issues. Their chains came off during races and it was highly publicized at the time. And the thing is, I've done a bit of investigating here. What I understand is that that team, they didn't use the whole complete SRAM one by system. They used their own sort of custom parts in certain areas, such as a rear cassette, which from my understanding may have gone out of either the gear variation or gear range that is advised by SRAM. And as a result, They've had some issues with chains coming off. And I feel like it's kind of like, if you buy a car from a car manufacturer and you go in the engine, you change your valves and the pistons, and then the engine stops working, it's pretty hard to blame the manufacturer. So the pros and the cons. Let's talk about the pros first, and let's start with the two-by system. And I'm gonna 
do this on a two by bike. So the pros of a two by system. I'm now in Adelaide, beautiful city, about to hit up the hills. I'm riding a Cervelo S5. I'm gonna be reviewing this bike later on this channel. And on this bike, there is SRAM ETAP, two by system. It's a 5236 front, 1128 on the rear. So the benefits, the two pros that I wanna talk about is one, there's gonna be, as I hit the hills particularly here, less jump in between each gear. So as the terrain changes, I'm gonna be pretty confident. I'm gonna be finding a comfortable gear no matter what. And number two, you know, I could ride this bike in a fast bunch ride, crit racing, and then I can also smash the hills and not be too concerned. So the practicality of having a larger gear range on this bike versus a one by system is another pro. So the pros of a one by system, they're pretty compelling I reckon, there's four of them. There might be more, you let me know below. Number one is it's lighter. Look how much is up for debate, I've read online 150 grams but it wasn't comparing it to anything. But when you think about it, there's one front chain ring, so you don't have two. There's no chain guide and there's no derailleur, so clearly it's gonna be lighter. Second of all, it must be more aerodynamic, surely. Number three, it's definitely quieter. You don't get chain rub, slap. There's just not much noise happening back there. And the fourth one, my personal favorite, is the gear changing is ever so reliable. Smooth, it's efficient. I haven't had one issue whatsoever. And you think about, obviously you've got SRAM's rear clutch system, but you've also got a narrow tooth, wide tooth chain ring and a different chain, which makes the efficiency of the chain so much more reliable and in my opinion a lot better so the cons of a two by system i'm in the adelaide hills now if you can't tell by my breath and i'm enjoying being the little ring to be honest but as the bike slowed down i've noticed something there's definitely more noise happening down there which proves a couple of things one is a two by system is noisier and it requires more maintenance Looking down at it as well, it's definitely less aerodynamic. It obviously weighs more. And lastly, the gear changing, it's not snappy and that almost perfect gear change you get with a one by system. So the cons of a one by system, as a general rule of thumb, you're gonna have a bigger jump in between each gear. And number two, if you want the flexibility of having a fast, bunch riding or criterion bike and also have a bike that you can take on some major hill climbs then in order to do that on a one by system you're going to need to change your front chain ring and your rear cassette and some might find that a little frustrating so my riding experiences with the one by i got back from adelaide a couple of days ago where i was riding a two by as you know picked up the one by this morning and i've actually done some hill repeats on this bike this morning so i'll link to that ride below but Going from a two by back to a one by really makes you appreciate the pros of a one by system that I've talked about earlier in this video. And I think that's a, a quick and easy way to sum up my riding experiences. It's been more reliable, it's been quieter, and to me more aesthetically pleasing. So I think for anyone out there, if you're thinking about a one by system, really it comes down to having a good think about the type of riding that you're doing and selecting the right gear ratios. Because if you do that, you're gonna have a great experience with one bike.